Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about one of classic fantasy's biggest series, The Rift War Cycle by Raymond D. Feist. So The Rift War Cycle by Raymond D. Feist is made up of 29 or 30 books and a novella, and there's a few short stories thrown in there for good measure as well. Overall, just taking the novels in this series into consideration, it's a whopping 13,000 pages, or at best estimates, just under 4 million words. Just for the novels in this series, then, that works out as an average of about 450 pages per book, although most of them do tend to be in the 3 to 400 page range. So if you were to read this series at the average reading pace for a solid 8 to 9 hours a day every single day, you would just be getting towards the end of the final book by the end of a calendar month. So what are you waiting for? In this video, I'll take a look at all of the individual series that make up the wider Rift War cycle, as well as which books you can miss without losing any of the kind of essential overall storyline, and a look at a couple of different ideas for the reading order. First of all, though, some of the key details of this series and some of the questions that I've been asked about the Rift War cycle. So these books were released over a 31 year period with Magician in 1982 and Magician's End in 2013. I think I was 16 years old when I started reading these books and the Rift War Cycle or the Rift War Saga as the first trilogy of books within the Rift War Cycle was my first real introduction to adult fantasy and really started to put me on the path to where my reading tastes lie today. I'll get into the individual series that make up the Rift War Cycle later in the video, but there are 10 of them altogether, 6 trilogies, 2 quadrilogies and 2 duologies, although one of the quadrilogies is technically a trilogy with a novella making up the numbers. There is one trilogy which is co-written by another legendary fantasy author. There's another trilogy which is kind of guest authored by three individuals who joined Raymond D. Feist to write in his world. And then all of the other books in the Rift War cycle, Raymond D. Feist has sole writing credits for. The books themselves take place over a long period of time. I've not really or reliably at least seen it defined anywhere, but by my estimations there are at least a hundred years between the first book, Magician, and the last book, Magician's End, although from memory it definitely felt a bit longer than that when I was actually reading the books. There are several characters within the Rift War cycle who are long-lived, so you'll see them in various books throughout the entirety of the 30-book Rift War cycle, but most of the characters do have what you might call more conventional lifespan, so you might see them as young characters in one book, and then several books later on in the series, you'll see them again as old characters. So in some instances, you will see the full kind of life from start to finish of some of these characters. Some of the characters within this series rank amongst my favourites in fantasy, with characters like Prince Arufa, Jimmy the Hand, Eric von Darkmoor really sticking out as key characters in my whole kind of fantasy history, even though I've not read anything about these characters for a good number of years now. In terms of the characters, probably the one thing I would say that is a, a bit of a shame is that there isn't really a strong female lead throughout these books. As the series progress, we do see more female characters and certainly more capable female characters, but it is always a male character or a collection of male characters making up the forefront of each of these books. The exception to this being the Empire series, which is co-written by Jani Wirtz and which does have a female lead character. I will say that these books are proper classic fantasy. So if you're used to a modern fantasy kind of writing style, then especially the older books in the Rift War Cycle may seem a little bit dated. People may say that these books are full of tropes, but which fantasy books aren't full of tropes? And they may also say that they have seen it all before, but for me the thing to remember is that modern fantasy is really inspired by classic fantasy series like the Rift War Cycle, so is it really a surprise to see some of the same themes and some of the same ideas being repeated by the modern fantasy authors and in the modern fantasy series that we have today? 
I'll also say that although these are adult fantasy books, being classic fantasy, they do seem kind of lighter in tone to a lot of the modern fantasy that you will see today, with no real kind of blood and gore and sex and violence and bad language that really stands out in these books. To be clear, it is an epic fantasy series, so there is plenty of battle and death, but it's not really the kind of gratuitous, in-your-face, blood and gore that you get in some fantasy series today. So the overall series is set in a kind of multiverse, I guess. We have at some points in the story, some characters have access to what is known as a Hall of Worlds, where travellers can step between different worlds, different planets in this kind of multiverse. And you also have the rifts between worlds that give the series its name. The majority of the series is set in the land of Midkemia, which has the traditional kind of medieval European setting. We also see the world of Kelowan, which has a Asian-inspired setting. There are also other countries and continents on the same planet as Midkemia, such as Great Kesh or the Keshian Confederacy, uh, which has kind of a Middle Eastern or Persian vibe to it. And then you also have other places like Navindus and the very alien-seeming Dasati homeworld. There's a very short premise to the series, or at least the original trilogy of this series. I'm going to borrow from the kind of headline summary on Google because I feel that it does a good job without spoiling any of the series or any of the later series within the Rift War cycle. And of course, the plan is to avoid spoilers for any of the books that I'm going to talk about in my video today. The Rift War Saga chronicles the adventures of a number of characters as they become embroiled in a war between Midkemia and Kelowan, different worlds connected by a rift or magical gateway. In the course of the struggle, it gradually becomes clear that another force poses a greater threat than the war itself. So yes, that is specifically vague, but it does, as I say, sum up the overall Rift War Saga, which is the first trilogy of the series, and then all of the other series build on from that. So throughout the 30 books that make up the Rift War Cycle, there are obviously a number of different arcs, and you will have new threats that arise, and you'll also have old threats re-emerging that the characters had assumed to have been ended. The idea of rifts between the worlds and forces coming and invading from another world, though, is pretty much a constant throughout the majority of these series, however. So, onto the books then that make up the Rift War cycle, and what I'll do is I'll go through each individual series in pretty much publication order, starting from the earliest date of the first book in the series, because there is a bit of overlap with some of the earlier series, especially within this Rift War cycle. I'm not going to give a synopsis for each of the series because I don't want to provide any spoilers, as I mentioned. So what I will do is include in the description box down below a link to the Goodreads uh, kind of overall series page where you can view every single book and the individual synopses for them at your heart's content. So obviously, starting right at the beginning, we have the original trilogy, the Rift War Saga. Now, where at the start of the video I said that the overall Rift War cycle is 29 or 30 books, this is why there's that difference in the numbers, because it depends how you look at it, which edition you have. So we start off with Magician, which is sometimes split into the two volumes. So I view it as one volume because I have the combined edition, which means that the series for me, the Rift War Cycle, is 29 books. Magician is sometimes split, though, into two volumes, giving us our 30-book series. And those split volume books are titled Magician Apprentice and Magician Master. We then have Silverthorn and The Darkness at Sephanon as books two and three of this series. And The Rift War Saga itself is right up there amongst my favourites of all of the books in The Rift War Cycle. So next up we have the Empire Trilogy, which was co-written by legendary author Jani Wirtz. We start off with Daughter of the Empire, which is the only one of this series that I've actually got myself. And then we complete the trilogy with Servant of the Empire and Mistress of the Empire. These books take place over a similar timeline to the original Rift War Saga, with Daughter of the Empire starting during the events of Magician itself. The books are not seen as essential to the overall Rift War Cycle storyline, so they are ones that can be skipped if you're looking at reading the series but not reading every single book. Although I haven't actually read this particular trilogy, it's the only part of a Rift War Cycle that I haven't personally read, Many people do say that the Empire Trilogy is one of, if not the best, 
individual series making up the Rift War cycle. The next series is the duology known as Crondor's Sons, which starts off with Prince of the Blood, and then we have the King's Buccaneer, which is another title that I don't own a physical copy of. As far as the world chronology goes, these books cover a period around 20 to 30 years after the Rift War saga, and as far as the publication order goes, Prince of the Blood was released before the final two books of the Empire trilogy, and King's Buccaneer was released after the Empire trilogy had been completed. The next series in the Rift War cycle is the Quadrilogy, which makes up the Serpent War saga. With this one, we start with Shadow of the Dark Queen and Rise of the Merchant Prince. We then have Rage of the Demon King and Shards of the Broken Crown. This series is set around about 50 years after the events of the original Rift War saga. And along with the Rift War saga, this is my favourite series within the whole of the Rift War cycle. And the two series, the Rift War saga and the Serpent War saga, I combined as a single entry in my top 10 list of favourite fantasy series. So this is definitely a high recommendation for me. Then we move on to the Rift War Legacy, which is another kind of quadrilogy. This is the three Crondor books that you see behind me. Crondor the Betrayal, Crondor the Assassins, and Crondor Tear of the Gods. And then there were originally supposed to be two further entries in this series, but they never happened. But then years later, when the Rift War cycle as a whole was being wrapped up, the novella Jimmy and the Crawler was added to tie up some of the uh, kind of loose ends that the intended storylines would have incorporated. In terms of the world chronology, these are set approximately 10 years after the end of the Rift War saga. They're not seen as essential reading, so this is another series that you can skip if you're still looking to cover the overall storyline of the Rift War cycle. But if you are reading them, as far as the chronology goes, you should read them after the Rift War saga. Next up we have the trilogy titled The Legends of the Rift War, which Raymond E. Feist co-wrote with different guest authors on each volume. So we start off here in terms of publication order with Honoured Enemy, written alongside William Forstgen. We then have Murder in Lamut, written alongside Joel Rosenberg, and Jimmy the Hand, written alongside Steve Sterling. In terms of world chronology, these books are set within the same time period as the Rift War saga, with Jimmy the Hand actually being the earliest in the world chronology, taking place during events of the first book, Magician. Once more, these books are not seen as essential to the overall storyline, so can be skipped. If you are reading them, however, Jimmy the Hand should therefore be read after Magician, and the other two books it's recommended to read after the actual completion of the Rift War saga. All of the remaining books in the Rift War cycle follow on from each other in terms of the world chronology and in terms of the storyline, so these are all seen as the kind of essential reading to keep up with the overall storyline of the Rift War cycle itself. So we start off with the Conclave of Shadows trilogy, which kicks off with Talon of the Silver Hawk. We then have King of Foxes and Exiles Return. Although I've not been able to kind of reliably verify it, these books are set approximately 30 years after the Serpent War Saga. The Dark War Saga is the next trilogy. This one takes place around about two years after the end of the previous trilogy, and this is where I start to get into my big hardbacks, which are a bit more difficult to fit onto the shelf behind my head. But we start this one off with Flight of the Nighthawks and Into a Dark Realm, and then finish it off with Wrath of a Mad God. The penultimate series in the Rift War cycle is the Demon War Saga, and this one is estimated to take place around about 10 years after events of the previous Dark War trilogy. With this one, we have Rides of Dread Legion and At the Gates of Darkness. And then finally, we have the Chaos War Saga, which starts off with a kingdom besieged and a crown imperiled, and then finishes with Magician's End, which brings, for my mind at least, a satisfying conclusion to the overall storyline of the Rift War Cycle. So that's one reading order, at least, for the Rift War Cycle. I'm not going to go and list all of the individual books again and give you alternative reading orders. What I'll do instead is link in the description box below the author's official website where he has two or three different suggestions for the reading order, whether it's World Chronology, Publication Order, or Publication by Series, which is basically the list that I've just gone through now. In terms of the cycle itself, the 30 books that make up the Rift War cycle, although I liked the overall story and I liked all of the books as they are, 
I will say that I found there was a bit of a drop off in quality in my opinion as the series progressed and that does tend to be as well the popular opinion with people who have read the entirety of the Rift War cycle. Various places you can go and talk about this series people will generally tend to have the idea that the later books in the series aren't quite as good as the earlier series. For me, as I've said, I think my favourite of all of them was the Serpent War Saga, very closely followed by the original Rift War Saga, but I did like all of them, it's just some of the books weren't quite as good for me as those original series were. I can't quite put my finger on it, but I think it was somewhere around the Conclave of Shadows, so for me, either after the Conclave of Shadows, or possibly beginning with the Conclave of Shadows trilogy, is where I started to see the books dropping off a little bit in the quality. I'm not going to include the Empire series, because as I said earlier, I've not read those. They are considered to be amongst the best of the Rift War cycle, though, according to popular internet opinion. And I'm also not really including there the Legends of the Rift War, because those books were co-written with guest authors, so it's not quite as easy to compare to the rest of the books making up this world. So anyway, that was your brief rundown of the Rift War cycle and the individual series that make it up. Let me know in the comments down below if you've read this and what your thoughts were. Which were your favourite books in the series? Which maybe were your least favourite books? What were your overall thoughts of this 30 book series? If you haven't read this series, let me know if you're looking forward to it, especially now that we've had a TV series announced. There is a show in development where the rights for the first two trilogies, the Riffle Saga and the Empire trilogy, those rights have been acquired and we are going to see, hopefully, at some point in the not too distant future, a TV series based on these books. As usual, if you've appreciated this content, do the usual YouTube stuff with the liking, the subscribing. Don't forget to check out the social media links in the description box below where you can catch me on Twitter, Instagram or Goodreads. And also check out the support the channel section where you can get a preview of upcoming videos as well as some behind the scenes details via the Ko-fi page. That's me for today though. I hope you found this video useful and I hope I'll see you again. Until then though, as always, take care of yourselves, read some good books. Bye for now.